In lesson part two on the IQ System Controller 2, you'll learn about the components and wiring. Let's look inside the IQ System Controller 2. We will review the components, wire, and breaker locations. There's the ground bar, neutral bar, and the neutral to ground bonding jumper. Be sure to remove this if the site already has a neutral to ground bond. If the IQ System Controller 2 is used as a service disconnect, a main breaker would go here. Remove the lugs and secure the correct Eaton CSR breaker with Enphase supplied hardware. For other sites, the input feed from your service panel is terminated at these lugs. The manual override switch is located on the front of the MID. Before you energize the unit, be sure to push it to the right for normal operation disabling the override mode. The electronic control board is located inside this metal enclosure. Behind the control board is the neutral forming transformer. This enables the system to supply both 120 and 240 volts to backup loads. This portion of the system, including the bus bar, breakers, and lugs is referred to as the Distributed Energy Resource Bus, or DER. The upper left breaker location is used by IQ batteries. Lower left is the PVAC combiner. Upper right has the factory supplied neutral forming transformer, or NFT breaker. Note that if a generator is used at a given site, this two pole breaker can be replaced with a quad breaker to supply power to both the IQ gateway and protect and connect the NFT to the DER bus. The lower right breaker location can be used to power the IQ gateway, connect a generator, or feed 100 amps or less to a backup load center. Located on the bottom of the bus bar are the lugs to feed your backup protected subpanel. If you are using a subpanel without its own overcurrent protection, such as a main lug only load center, you can install a load breaker here. For each of the breakers that connect to items that can be power sources, it is essential that the stowed conductors are used. The system includes small wire connectors with the literature kit. The left two ports can control up to four load control or PV shedding circuits. The rapid shutdown port is where the external RSD switch is wired into. The last port is dedicated to remotely controllable generators. The metal wire input terminals are where you must land the microgrid power sources. You have battery storage, PVAC combiner, and generator input terminals. It's time to begin installation of wiring and breakers. Conduit must enter from the side or bottom, and wire routing should allow enough space for wire bends. Install correctly sized wires per documentation and plan sets. Double check that wires are properly torqued to listed specifications. It's a best practice to land wires from the rear and work your way forward. Product improvements and updates occur over time so always check dead front labels and diagrams to verify correct breaker and wiring locations. The IQ system controller enclosure has tapered walls on both the sides and on the bottom. The interior space in which conduit can enter needs one inch or more of clearance as measured from the wall. Be sure to account for both the taper and space from the wall as you plan your conduit entrances. In order for the system to work safely and reliably, a number of source circuits must terminate in the lugs at the lower left of the IQ system controller. The circuit then passes through control electronics and relays, then passes through the breakers via the stowed conductors. Do not wire power sources directly to the breakers on the DER bus. There are a few items that can be directly wired to breakers here, primarily the IQ gateway and a 100 amp backup subpanel breaker. When using an IQ combiner box 3 or 4 with an IQ system controller 2, you can wire the enclosed IQ gateway three ways. In all cases, remove the breaker from the combiner box. 
That location is for PV only sites. 1. Place the breaker in the lower right IQ gateway slash generator location and directly wire it to the IQ gateway input. 2. Place the breaker in a backup panel and directly wire it to the IQ gateway input. Or 3. If a generator is installed, you can replace the NFT breaker with a quad breaker. Then wire one circuit to the IQ gateway input and the other back to the neutral forming transformer. The lower right breaker location provides options. It can be used to supply power to the IQ gateway directly wired to the breaker, interconnect with a generator source via the stowed conductors, supply power to auxiliary control transformers for load control slash PV shedding with direct wiring, and finally, Feed a backup load center with a 100 amp or less breaker. Rather than wiring the backup panel center to the lugs below, if you terminate at this breaker, you can use smaller conductors. This output is wired directly to the breaker. Be sure to use the correct supplied labels. Now let's look at the function and wiring of the rapid shutdown switch. Rapid shutdown switches are intended to promote safety in the event of an emergency. For any service work, it is best to turn off all switches and verify that the circuits are fully de-energized. The external switch is purchased separately. The in-phase solution includes wire splices that reduce installer-supplied wire from 12 or 14 gauge to 16 gauge, as that is the largest size for the RSD wiring connector terminals. Also included are several labels. Your local AHJ may have specific requirements. The RSD switch opens two circuits when turned off, quickly turning off the entire Enphase energy system. For more details, review the RSD quick install guide. Never assume wiring terminals and conductors are de-energized. Multiple switches may need to be turned off to de-energize the system. Verify with a multimeter. Do not work on live circuits. Do not remove or install any equipment, wires, breakers, batteries, microinverters, etc. while equipment is on. Follow the directions on how to de-energize and how to properly energize a system. Be sure to test the rapid shutdown RSD feature and verify the site is safe. Enphase offers additional documentation and training resources. Be sure to review the latest installation guides, planning or technical briefs, and data sheets.